I'm gonna get into some spoilers in this one, so just be forewarned. I'm gonna try to keep it relatively low spoilers until like near the end of the review, so <clears throat> I'm gonna try to keep this one chronological, um, because I'm probably gonna be going over a bunch of the stuff that happens. So we start off with, you know, in this year, 2009, and it gradually shows us events taking us to 2012. Big spoiler. Um, and incidentally, at times the film does indeed feel like it's taking three years of your life away. <clears throat> so we get introduced to a bunch of various characters, most of whom you are not going to remember who, who is who by the time that they come to their untimely demise, um, and very few of whom you're actually going to care about when anything happens to them. I th think it's only, um, it's, it's just, as, as effects get more and more realistic and intricate and detailed and impressive, it becomes less and less of a tool and more and more the focus of the film and people forget that you know you're actually supposed to care about what you see it's not just supposed to be pretty stuff to um, I think before I go too much further I just feel compelled because the idea of that people are actually worried that this is gonna happen scientists who are you know looking into what what might happen, what's going to happen in the future, say it probably will not be anywhere near that soon. And the mind calendar thing, that's a mistake. That's The thing is, the Mayan calendar for that period ends 2012. That means a new one begins. As far as I know, they don't even have any kind of Armageddon apocalypse. They, and, and their calendars go, you know, ridiculously far into the future, way further than the planet's probably gonna last with us around. <clears throat> so anyway, um, we get various scenes of people. Um, eventually we meet John Cusack and his two not terribly annoying kids, which is always a plus, because with Hollywood you can't always count on that. And um, they go to Yellowstone Park and we get the little hint that she's afraid because that's gonna be really important later. <clears throat> they go to the park and he um, he sees this you know sign saying don't go any further so he goes further and they have this little moment that's just so ridiculously phoned in. The kid, the the boy, says, no, don't you see the signs? And, you know, he, he acts it nicely enough. And then it just cuts, and then they're all just going. There's not... The, the, the father doesn't say, oh, don't worry, I wouldn't let anything bad happen to you. The, the sister doesn't object. They don't even have the boy go like, ah, whatever, you'll get your way anyway, so I'll just come along with you. Nothing. They just threw the line in there because they knew that someone had to object because that's the way th things go, but nothing else happens. It's as if it wasn't even... It, it just has absolutely no impact. For, for a film that's too long, there's actually stuff that seems like it's missing. There's, there's also, like, at least one, maybe two, emotional phone calls between characters that are, you know, that have some kind of relationship with one another, where you don't actually feel like they're in the same movie. Like, literally, when... I'm gonna take a chronological leap now. When uh, the... Um, Dr. Helms... whatever. Um, black dude in the lead. When he calls... Uh, uh, he's talking to his father uh, on the boat. Slight uh, side note, 
does George Siegel ever play anything other than a parent who doesn't live up to being a parent, in this case a grandparent, but also the parent part. I mean, look who's talking, or don't because it's a shitty movie. <clears throat> just shoot me. I mean, he always seems to play this parent that just is not there for the child. That Anyway, so they're talking, and I think it's the father who's like crying, bawling his eyes out, and the son is like, yeah, yeah. He's, he's like... I mean, he's, he's into it, you know, he's, and he acts it nicely enough. It's just... I mean... You can often tell that the two care the the two actors are not actually recording it at the same time and are not actually responding to one another. Here you could really tell it's like I don't know. It was recorded in two completely separate days, and on one day, um, Emmerich just said, "Okay, go for it. I want the full-on emotion." And to the other actor, he said, um, "Yeah, just that's that's fine. Okay, next shot." <clears throat> so anyway, where was I? Yellowstone Park. So they, um, yeah, they, they go around, you know, find, see the weird-ass lake, um, and they get spotted by Woody Harrelson in his worst performance ever. Um, his entire character is just annoying and 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 it brings up he um they they have he has this little animation explain the basic idea of the plot in a silly way so that you know it doesn't get too carried away in being big and important and stuff um and that's sort of okay and he 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 runs this independent little radio thing and he points out that every time someone has gotten close to the truth, they've gotten killed for trying to tell. Um, if every time they try to reveal it to someone else who's not supposed to know, there's like 12 people who do know, and they're supposed to keep it a secret. But he knows, and he's not only telling everybody who's listening to the radio, the truth, as he perceives it, because he's a little off his rocker, so he doesn't quite have all the f facts, and he doesn't completely understand everything, but he's not only telling them that, he's specifying exactly what he, he says here in Yellowstone Park. So, why has nothing at all been done to him? He's, he's out there uh, alone, solitarily. The military's like 30 feet away, how can they not find him? How can they not try to silence him? He's probably, you know, at least as dangerous as credible people out there revealing it. And nobody would notice. I mean, okay, cynical, but nobody would notice other than the people listening to him. And they're probably not, you know, okay, yeah, so that might be why they don't bother with killing him, but still... It just doesn't make sense if they're... And that whole point doesn't really have the impact that I think it's supposed to. You know, it's the, you know, big conspiracy, shadow government kind of thing. But no, it's just... It doesn't really impact us all that much. So, um... They meet him and... They, um, you know, there... Some stuff happens, the... Um... The first of at least two, maybe three, ridiculously lame jokes happen. The the two um, um, Cusack's characters divorced. Uh, so Amanda Peet and don't know the actor Gordon's the character. They start, you know, almost humping in the. Um, well, he tries to. She doesn't really. Um, in the the uh, the mall, and <clears throat> he says some really ridiculously contrived line like something is pulling us apart or some bullshit, and 
the cracks 